During the apocalypse, many creatures out there will perish. However, you may be surprised how many will seemingly thrive without so many humans being around. If we have any chance of survival during the zombie apocalypse, we could probably learn a few things about these. Whether it's microorganisms who can survive being in outer space, or plants you can consider growing on your farm, here are life forms that could survive the apocalypse. Number 13. The Ginkgo Biloba Tree This is the only remaining type of ginkgo tree in existence. Fossils of it date back to 270 million years ago and are originally native to the country of China. People have found them useful for traditional medicine and as a source of food. And luckily, they might still be around during the apocalypse. There is no evidence to show that anything from the ginkgo biloba tree is beneficial to humans, which will increase its likelihood of sticking around for a while. However, you could probably consider using it for wood or as a shelter. The life form was one of few trees still left standing after a nuclear blast in Hiroshima. That's right, being only one mile away from the epicenter of the blast, ginkgo trees managed to still remain standing as a defiant survivor of an apocalyptic event. This is also the oldest species of tree that survived an apocalypse before. You know, the one that took out all the dinosaurs. Another strange thing about it is that it might keep other organisms from getting too close to it. In fact, it actually smells like vomit and repels hungry animals. Dinosaurs wouldn't even eat these things. Number 12. Desert Sage the state plant of Nevada is a sagebrush which flourishes in harsh environments of the desert. It's able to absorb water from a depth of 13 feet below the surface with a variety of different roots. The bitter taste of the leaves saves them from being eaten by wild animals. However, it can still serve useful to humans. Native Americans use them for starting fires by using friction, but these fires have been known to get out of control at times. Some of the branches can reach as high as 12 feet. Ghost towns that have been abandoned in the Mojave Desert tend to be typically consumed by this brush and reimagine it will fare well during an apocalyptic scenario. Number 11. The Tardigrade They have eight legs and they get the nickname of the water bear due to the way they walk around. These are classified as extremophiles and can survive in the most extreme conditions imaginable. During an experiment, they concluded that tardigrades can actually survive the same conditions of space for 10 days. This is due to their ability to survive UV radiation. Not only that, they've also been found in Antarctic glaciers, the mountains of the Himalayas, and even in boiling hot springs. The craziest fact about this creature is that it's actually capable of going 100 years with no food and no water. There are a few microorganisms capable of surviving a doomsday scenario, which we'll get to later on in this video. Number 10. Prickly Pears Being stranded in the middle of the desert with barely any water can prove to be a death sentence for many people. But before you give up and die of dehydration, do your best to search for the prickly pear fruit, which are commonly found in America's deserts. These fruit grow on cactus, which can survive very little rainfall, and will provide you with precious juice that might save your life. These grow on the Nopales cactus you see here, and is described as tasting like pink bubblegum and watermelon. Careful though, they are prickly. Here in this photo, you see a guy properly removing a prickly pear from a cactus, and hopefully, you have a knife to cut it open. We imagine they still have a pretty good chance of surviving the apocalypse as well. Number 9. Killer Climber Plant This mysterious Chinese plant has become an invasive species and completely engulfed places such as Georgia, Alabama, and South Carolina. It's kind of easy to imagine this shrub consuming buildings of cities where humans once inhabited. Also known as kudzu, it's one of the most aggressive species of plant and can kill other plants in its path. Horticulturists became fascinated with this plant but made the wrong decision of planting it in their gardens in the southeastern United States. It turned out this was the perfect environment for it to thrive to unimaginable levels. Kudzu is also known as a Japanese arrowroot and belongs to a legume family similar to peas. The plant climbs all over trees and other shrubs, killing them in the process. This zombie-like plant is only killable from its roots and has the potential to grow covering 150,000 acres per year. Number 8. Soybeans There is a lot of soy in just about all of our processed food one way or another, and they do have some potential as a post-nuclear apocalyptic crop. 
Some genetic engineers have come up with a way to modify soybeans and make them more resistant to pesticides. Bugs on the crops will be completely wiped out, but the plant will remain unharmed. We're taking a wild guess that they could also modify the genetics of soybeans to make them more radiation resistant. What's also interesting about soybeans is that farmers have found that they grow surprisingly well in areas near the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Studies also show that they needed less water and the seeds were smaller than the non-radioactive counterparts. More research is needed, but biologists seem fairly certain that they can come up with mutations of soybeans which can withstand or even remove nuclear contamination. Number 7. Salmonella In one of our videos, we discussed ways that pathogens from outer space could bring on hordes of the undead, and we really meant it. Salmonella can certainly be lurking around during the apocalypse as well. This experiment explains how that might happen. Some people might believe that bacteria or other microorganisms might die once exposed to the environments of space, but that's certainly not the case with Salmonella, and in fact, this virus actually becomes much more toxic than on Earth. This was done to see what would happen if an astronaut was exposed to Salmonella while on the job, and the results were frightening. Mice infected with the space-grown Salmonella died at a 28% quicker pace than the ones on Earth. The bacteria seem to reproduce at twice the rate too, so watch out. Number 5. Amoebas These unicellular organisms, which do not have a definitive shape, have been exposed to environments with high levels of radiation and survived. The amoeba becomes dormant when it's exposed to a lethal environment and will come back to life when things are favorable. They basically roll up into a little ball and secrete a protective protein which is almost like nuclear fallout sunscreen in a sense. This has allowed the amoeba to be more resistant to radiation than scorpions. It also might be able to withstand nuclear conditions due to the way it can reproduce. Since the amoeba is asexual, it can reproduce through a process known as binary fission, where it basically splits in half. This means it doesn't even really need a partner, and the process repeats itself. Number 4. English Ivy English Ivy is an invasive species of flowering plant that will likely consume the planet during the apocalypse. They don't need humans to water them, and they probably prefer us not being there at all. It's illegal to own in some states because it's quite difficult to kill, and it can survive in many different environments. The plant can climb up buildings 100 feet in the sky, and it can grow in areas with little to no sunlight. Similar to kudzu in a way, English ivy can choke out other plants within a matter of a few months. They secrete a glue-like nanoparticle which allows them to attach themselves to whatever surface necessary. For gardeners, it's typically their job to completely eradicate any English ivy that they come across. If they serve any purpose to mankind, it would be to help purify indoor air quality, but you'd have to be careful to not let it get out of control. Number 3. Flax In addition to soybeans, flax seeds were able to grow just fine in radiation-contaminated soil, and their growth was compared to flax grown in non-radioactive soil. They noted that the radioactive component had little to no effect on the growth of the flax, and the plant seemingly shrugged off the fact that radioactive fallout consumed the area. 5% of proteins from the plant were altered, which was much lower than expected. They noticed that the proteins that did change were involved in cell signaling, which might have relayed a message letting the other cells know that they should become radioactive resistant. Number 2. Radiotrophic Fungi There may indeed be a startling amount of different fungi that survives during the apocalypse. In any case, though, we'll take a look at the Devil's Finger Mushroom, which starts off like a little blob as you see in this photo. What's strange about mushrooms and different types of fungi is that they can seemingly feast off radiation, but only that radiation contains melanin, which is a chemical found in human skin. In many cases, water that's been polluted with nuclear waste contains organisms, strangely enough. Radiotrophic fungi can use melanin to convert gamma radiation into energy. It's almost like photosynthesis, but uses gamma rays instead. A robot once went into the reactor of Chernobyl and found out there were large amounts of radiotrophic fungi covering the walls. One of them was known as Cotinaris capertus. They're also known to be infested with maggots, so watch out. And number 1. Thermococcus gamatellarens The organism who is thought to actually be the most resistant to radiation and therefore could without a doubt survive during the nuclear apocalypse would be this extreme extremophile. This underwater hydrothermal life form was found 2,000 meters deep off the coast of California. 
Not only can it resist 6,000 times the fatal amount of radiation a human can, it prefers to live in environments where water is literally boiling. But yes, you heard us correctly. Unlike other organisms, this microorganism can rapidly repair any chromosomal DNA within a blink of an eye. Anything that seems like it would be damaging to humans tends to help it out. For whatever reason, it prefers to live in places with high concentrations of sulfur, which would even make a volcano doomsday scenario possible for it to thrive in. 